Layer lines, they're always a problem in a 3D print. They drive people nuts. Well, today we're gonna talk about sanding tools that can help you make that a lot better. See you guys inside. Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we are talking about layer lines, mold lines, and my most hated topic and thing to do in 3D printing, sanding. Yes, today we're talking about sanding tools. So a couple weeks back I put a, out a video on the Mr. Polisher little tool to help getting rid of layer lines and now we're going to expand upon that a lot more with a whole set of range of tools from hand tools to motorized to kind of help out with the layer line issue. So a lot of the way to get rid of layer lines is through Cura and making sure that your settings are very, very good. But no matter how good your settings are, you're going to have layer lines and you're going to have seam lines and you're going to have just bad spots, rough spots appear in your models. And sanding is something that everybody's going to have to do. So with that, we're going to take a look at a wide set of tools to help with sanding and making your models look just perfect. So sanding is very important. Fillers are really important. And we'll do a video on fillers if you guys so demand it down in the comments below. And I encourage debate. If there's a tool that you use that I don't have in here, this is not every tool you can use. This is just some that I like to use that are kind of my go-to as I work on different models and different things like that. So kind of keep that in mind. This is not the end all. You may disagree with something I say, and that's fine. My experience is why I use some tools and I don't use others. So definitely, let's have a lively conversation down there in those comments. If you're new here, never seen this channel before and really curious about the content, as we talk about 3D printing and different things to just make everything easier and better, definitely hit that subscribe button and join the crew here as we keep going on with new topics. Also, if you wanna back the channel, please check out our Patreon. So with that, let's hop over and let's just take a look at the tools of the trade here, okay? So let's go to the desk and let's do that. Okay guys, so as you can see here on the table, I've got a whole myriad of different tools. So I'm gonna start with the non-motorized and we're gonna go to the motorized tools, okay? So a lot on the table to take in, but you know, it's kind of one of those things, I kind of have a tool for a job. So kind of keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm gonna pick on is just modeling sandpaper. So this stuff is handy. I usually pick this up at Hobby Lobby, Amazon, various different extremely fine grits. Um, and they come in really handy for getting in there and running the model across to get good clean cuts. So definitely a tool that I like to use. Another tool that I like to use are these foam nail files. So these foam nail files work really, really well. Um, they're soft, the impact, especially when I'm doing like Warhammer miniatures, they're very good for helping me get um, in there and get lines cleaned up and get things moving, cleaned up. And usually you can get like a hundred of these little guys for like 10 bucks or something. So they're fairly cheap. So those two alone are two very basic, probably found around the house kind of sanders that you can find and work with. So they're very, very handy. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about, they're called sanding twigs. So these are kind of like the memory board foam um, sanders, except they're extremely thin and they're extremely rigid. So I'm going to try and get one out of the bag here. And they come in very, very handy. They're very small, very thin, different grits. They've got some give, but they also got rigidity. So when you're doing something very small in a tight corner or something, these can be very much your best friend. They're very thin, very well at lightweight, and they come in a nice big bag. Um, there's 20 in this variety pack. And they usually, for a variety pack like that, run about $10. And they just come in really super handy, um, especially when I'm working on SLA, small resin prints and stuff like that. Getting in those little nooks and crannies, getting rid of a, a connection where a connection like that from a SLA print from a support or something like that. It can be a very handy little product. So definitely recommend these. Um, they're just the sanding twigs. They work on all kinds of stuff from NeuraSand. So now we're gonna kind of step it up. 
This is a little kit that I bought at Harbor Freight, but I have a link in Amazon for these. It is a five file set, little precision files. And these can come in very handy to help get rid of where support connections are, um, thinning out like really bad kind of transition lines between parts and different things like that. So a handy little file set can be a lifesaver when you definitely need something strong and something that can do a job, do very weird spaces. Like this one is very, it comes to a point, makes it very easy to get in there and move, move it back and forth and get some sanding. So a file set can be very, very handy. It is a great little tool to kind of have. I like the ones with the little handles. Um, just gives me a little bit more grip um, and is a very, very nice tool. So this one you can pick up at your local hardware store. This is a 3M sand blastering. This is an edge detail block. So it's foam inside. So it's got give just like the memory foam, but it works really well when I'm trying to get into weird spaces and corners like that. Or if I just need to go cross something flat, it's very handy. Um, you can buy this in different grits. So um, this is a 220 fine and they work really well. Um, they do eventually sh shred up, but what sandpaper is not going to. Um, and it just makes it very easy to hold on to this and get in there and sand. So definitely a very awesome tool to look at. It can be very useful and it's not just modeling. You can use it all around the house. So definitely a great tool. So the next one here is this. This is by sanding detail. These are just little sanding wands. So I'm gonna flip it over here. You can see I got four different types in the bag um, and it comes with all the different belts that can fit on any tension to fit. As a matter of fact, I hadn't opened this one up. Let's go ahead and open it up. So you can see it's just a really good fine little sanding tool that I can get in there and really work with or in the long term really kind of have a grit to run run it back and forth over. Different various grits of sandpaper come with it from fine to, to strong. You can basically have each tool loaded with a different grit and kind of color coat that way if you so choose. There are four tools included and then 20 belts. So definitely a great little kit to have around, um, especially for small models. Um, I was just using one of these on the Mad Cat. You can kind of see him sitting over here because we've got stuff like that to work on. But basically, it can be a very handy tool, especially with SLA or even working with filament printers. This can very much uh, be a very good tool to work with. So definitely one of those things that's great to have around. This wand is another one of my favorites. Um, it's rigid plastic. It belt clips on and can be very good for getting across large surfaces. So Mandalorian helmets, cosplay armor, this can be very handy for not huge surfaces, but definitely for the finishing or if you put filler in, this can be very, very useful tool. These run about $15, comes with various pieces of um, sandpaper clip on. But what's nice is if you get one of the long vibration sandpaper kits, you can make your own re refills on this one, which is pretty handy. So you can have just about any grit that you want. So definitely a good tool to keep around. One of my favorite tools, especially for the SLA world and um, kind of difficult one is the ribbon sand. So the sandpaper is just a ribbon held on two pegs on the metal and you can move back and forth and really kind of get in there. What's nice is if you've got like a figurine or something like that, you can pop this piece off, pull it between, pop it, and then just start sanding around it. So basically it's kind of like a coping saw, but a sander. So definitely a very useful, simplistic tool that can let you do quite a bit. These can get kind of expensive. They're not exactly the cheapest, but they are a wonderful thing to keep in, uh, keep in place. And this is actually, it's a, this is the professional sanding frame. This is from a company called uh, Flexifile. So um, www.flexifile.com is where you can find these, but you can find these on almost every hobby site. You can find these on amazon.com but they are just a great tool, especially if you got to get in the middle of something and you can definitely, you know, 
um, get in and sand. So definitely a very great, good tool to hold on to because it's very easy to press in a little bit and just take the ribbon off. Most of the times it comes with a basic set of ribbons um, and then you can just pop the new ribbon in and you're ready to go back to sanding within the figurine to get smooth spots. So definitely one to keep around. They offer it with various other grits, which can be a lifesaver. So that is a lot of the hand sanding tools that I use for projects. They come in very handy. They work very well, especially if you're trying to get rid of a layer line, a support connection, different thing like that. For if you've only got a couple, the hand sanders and stuff like that are great. But if you've got a bigger project, now I'm going to put a limiter here. I am not going up to big pieces, okay? So we're not going to talk about palm sanders. We're not going to go that big, okay? So keep that in mind as we go here. That can be a whole nother video if we want to go that route, okay? So the next thing that we want to keep in mind is the hand tools. So if you haven't, go check out the video on the Mr. Hobby. G Tool Cordless Polisher Pro. This little guy is great, especially for SLA, uh, resin prints, different things like that, small miniatures. It is great for getting in there and cleaning it up real quick. So very handy tool. I did a whole video on just this tool. So if you haven't seen that, go check that video out. It is a very, very nice tool. It works really well and really does kind of help out with getting it. It runs on two AA batteries and the average price tag is 20 to $22 in the US from Amazon. So definitely a very handy tool so i definitely recommend checking it out if uh, you're looking for something very basic um, you don't have a huge budget and want to definitely get to working on stuff so that is one to go check out now that tool is awesome it runs on vibration and oscillation but you know i you hate doing double a batteries so you want to make a bigger investment well that's where this guy comes in this is the microlux um, typically this is sold at Micromart. It's sold on Amazon and a bunch of other places. It is made in Japan, but it is a vibration sander with replaceable bits and multiple different type of tips, round, square, oval. Um, it all works on vibration. It is a very handy tool to work with. Um, and kind of the trick to this one is it is corded. So it is very handy to work with. Um, get into the small places but you do have a cord you got to be near power you lose that bat cordless function that you have from the g tool so sanding wise ah uh, you guys can tell from the paper right there they use this guy a lot so it is very good on sla model kits um, i use it on fdm especially in connection points where support was at and stuff like that it's very easy to twist and pull out the uh pull out the different types of connectors. So I like, I personally use the di the uh, square one a lot. So that's what the one that's in here, but it's a very handy tool to keep around. Very small, very slim, very easy to hold in your hands. So, but one of the things to keep in mind, especially if you're doing like FDM printing and different things like that, sanding can be also very dangerous to your print because what are you creating when you're sanding? You're creating heat and heat can actually start making the model deform or rip up. And I'm gonna tell the next two tools you've gotta to be very careful with because that can easily start to happen. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is this little belt sander. So this little guy is just awesome. This runs about 55 bucks on eBay. It's a one inch belt. You get tons of belts with it. And you guys can see, I use the dickens out of this especially for small parts, buffing stuff off. It is a great little tool. It's a little just desktop belt sander. It has two speeds and it's just honestly awesome. I love using this one, especially if I just need to sand a little nub or something off. It comes in very handy. Or if I have a project where I've printed like 30 pieces and I need to clean them up real quick, this is where I go. But I have to gently and slowly do it because parts will heat up and then I can easily ruin them too. So that's where this guy can be a detriment. I can get going and get sloppy real quick. I have to be very careful when I'm using this, but it is a great little tool. The final tool I'm gonna to talk about today is everybody may sneer, some may clap, but this is a Dremel 4000. Now the Dremel rotary tool 
can be good and it can be bad. They both have their benefits. Now this one, I have the pin attachment on, so it's much smaller. I get the horsepower of the big one, but I also get the precision. Now, I don't like using Dremel with FDM prints. Um, the Dremel can heat it up too quick and cause damage pretty quick. Um, but I do use it to cut. Um, like if I've got stubborn supports, I'll cut them off with this. But also I will use the stone attachments more than anything when I'm sanding. I don't usually use this, the sandpaper drums. I don't usually use the polishing tips. I use these stone bits. They tend to work really well in small doses to get through your sanding. So they can be very useful while you work on this stuff. So kind of keep that in mind as you work on your models that this is meant for short, small duration work. Now, if you've done something with a bunch of filler or a helmet with Bondo, stuff like that, go to town. The Bondo is not gonna melt, but FDM prints can definitely melt. And you just gotta be careful because it can get away from you and easily damage your print too. So definitely a precision tool that you need to work with, but it is one that is on my list and that I use. And this pin attachment onto the larger one can be very, very useful, especially when I'm doing precision work and make sure I don't hurt myself. So when I'm running with the horsepower of the big one through the little tip. So these are just some of the tools that I use. Like I said, I'm kind of keeping this small. I'm not going up to big prints. I'm keeping this with the smaller prints. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. If you have a question about anything on here, definitely leave a comment down below. Let's close this video out. All right, guys, that's the tools that I like to use. So some of them are pretty common. Some of them you wouldn't think to use. Some are you may have never seen before. If I showed you a new tool today, great. Links for those tools are down in the descriptions below for most of them can be easily found on Amazon or multiple other sites. So whether you're going from the handheld sander to the sanding sticks to the Microlux uh, vibration sander, they're all good tools to use within 3D printing and modeling as you do this kind of stuff. So it can be very advantageous to work with and just honestly handy tools to keep around for small projects, support cleanup and different things like that. So they are always needed in some form while you're 3D printing. So hope you guys enjoyed the content. Remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's have a conversation. If you saw a tool here that I didn't post, I may not know about it. So definitely post down in the comment below. I'd love to check out what tools you guys are using as well. So thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.